Okay, cool. So Chelsea, and then also the other one is Bailey Kai. She's she's in Kentucky as well. Bailey is B A Y L E E B A Y L E E. Excuse me, not 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 that Bailey. Come on, B A. I think it's B A. There it is. So Bailey um, Yeager her name is B A I L E Y, and then Yeager's Y A G E R. And then her Instagram is just B Y A G B Y A G I believe. I always like to try to have coaches be able to connect, especially with other coaches in their in their area. Um, so we got uh, Andrea just signed up as a coach in this past May with Brooke Reed. That's awesome. And she's from and you're from uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin and a, you're a farmer and horticulturist, horticulturist. Cool. I always love working with farmers um, because people, the, that farmer mindset seems to work really, really well versus the hunter mindset. You know, a lot of people have this hunting mindset where they expect to go out that day and bring home something that exact same day where this business doesn't quite work that way. You go out, you plant seeds, you invite, you get your nose, and then you allow people to watch you a little bit closer. And as, as you stay consistent for an extended period of time, all those nose you got, they, they're watching you and those seeds you planted start to grow. And eventually some of those people start to come around. So I always love working with uh, people that uh, you know, are used to that type of hard work to, to, to have the payoff come later on. Yeah, it definitely um, builds resiliency. Yeah, for sure. Um, and actually, Karen is on the call, too. And Karen is, is from Wisconsin. Uh, I'm not sure how far away she is from Milwaukee. I don't think too far. Um, but Karen signed up as a coach with Eric Vogel, who is uh, Megan Davies' boyfriend. You guys all know Megan Davies. Um, and I think, I think Karen signed up as a coach last year, right, Karen? Yeah. Yep. And how far are you from, are, are you from Milwaukee? About 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Okay. Cool. Very cool. And have you, are you still on the fence about Summit? I don't think I'm going to make it. I don't have a room. Uh, and, yeah, I don't think I'm going to make it. If – I mean, there's, there's a few coaches that are like looking for roommates or there's, they have rooms that they're, that they're trying to pass off to somebody. How far is the drive? Drive is about five or six hours. So yeah, trying to, trying to pull all this, trying to pull all this together. Um, I'm not sure I'm going to make it. I would love to would love to meet all you guys. I'm just not sure I'm going to make it this year. You're gonna you're gonna break my dad's heart. He's on the call right now. He's planning the team boom, uh, the team boom retreat or the team. Boom I told Eric. I told Eric if he could get me into Megan's workout, I might I might make the drive. I know. I won't. I, so Megan is gonna be probably doing two workouts. I think like her personal workout that people can sign up for, but then she's also gonna be part of that super workout on. Uh, I can't remember. I think they do it either Friday or Saturday morning at like six in the morning. But yeah, let's see if we can uh, let's see if we can get uh, a spot for you on stage. I think you've earned it. Uh, and then we got um, let's see, Cat. So Cat signed up as a coach 2019 with Casey Bocklet. So the Bocklet family, Kat, and Cat is a teacher from Virginia Beach. Also. Teachers seem to have a, a, a lot of success with Beachbody because, again, they're less of a hunter. They're more of a teacher. You know, I'll, I'll, I would rather work with a teacher than a, a salesperson in this business because, you know, someone who's in sales can come into this business and sell a million things, but then they just move on to the next sale. Whereas a teacher, they really take the time to work with their people, build relationships with their people, build confidence in their people. Um, so uh, I don't think it's a coincidence that a lot of teachers are also uh, coaches. Plus sometimes the, 
the the pay that teachers get for the amount of work they're putting in isn't always <laughs> apples to apples. Um, and then we've got uh, my sister Amy from Skinny Atlas. So we're all from upstate New York. She lives outside of Portland, Maine now. And then we have Sarah um, from Western Kentucky. So we got a Northern Kentucky with Chelsea. We got Western Kentucky with Sarah. And Sarah, who is your upline? I always like to know kind of who, who, who everyone's upline is on here. So we got, and then, was, all right, cool. It's so, Bailey. Oh, Bailey, Bailey Kai? Uh, no, Bailey uh, Yeager. Bailey Yeager. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this is this this is Sarah Book. Yes. Sorry. Okay. Hey. I couldn't I couldn't see your last name. I can no, only see have, it just says. I have my baby, so I don't have my picture up. <laughs> gotcha. All right. Well, we got two. How, how do you say it? Kentuckians? Is that what you call it? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Two Kentuckians on the on the call. One from northern. One from western. Big basketball country. All right. So this is kind of a, a call that we like to do every once in a while. Kind of the, the two, there's kind of the two things we like to teach as coaches, right? Um, and even me, even myself who's been doing this for a decade or, or so, I can always get better at these two things. But I think, you know, I think a lot of coaches, especially new coaches, they – if they get on national calls or they see what other coaches are doing, every, every coach does things a little bit different. So sometimes it's a little overwhelming for new coaches to be like, Oh, they're doing something a little different over here. And then this coach is doing something a little different. And so they kind of get confused and then they just don't take any action. Um, so the way I like to teach my coaches about the businesses, there's really only two things I'm going to teach ever teach my coaches. And so I tell them, there's only two things you really got to focus on, two things you'll ever have to teach your people. And the first is the mindset, the big picture mindset. You'll, sometimes I call it the escalator mindset. The big picture mindset is, um, you know, kind of like I was talking about salesperson versus teacher. You know, the, the big picture is not to sell a million challenge packs and then, you know, move on to the next sale. The big picture is to really make sure you're giving the people that decide to buy the challenge pack or just to start any type of journey. It's to make sure they have a really amazing experience. And then the better the experience they have, the more likely they're going to want to refer friends to you or maybe even more likely to want to become a coach. And when they do become a coach, the experience that you gave them is going to basically be the same experience that they give their people for the most part. So, you know, when I've taken a, my foot off the gas with my challenge groups and let's say maybe I, I had, you know, I was still kind of inviting and people had come in and started a challenge group, but I didn't really get on a zoom call with them. I didn't talk them through how the challenge group works. I didn't talk them through how the, the portion containers work. I just kind of threw them in a group and said, all right, kind of good luck. Those people have such a lower likelihood of sticking with it and a very low likelihood of wanting to become a coach. But if they do become a coach, they end up struggling because I didn't set a good example for them. I didn't give them a, an amazing experience. So they don't have anything to kind of go off of when they do become a coach. When I've really gone all in on giving my customers an amazing experience, setting up a Zoom call with them before the challenge starts, talking, just getting to know them on a Zoom call, get, telling them, hey, like, you know, get out of your comfort zone and, and share in the group and interact with the other people. When someone posts something in the group, make sure you like it and comment on it, ask questions. The more you interact with the people in the group, the better the experience everyone's going to have and the better the results everyone's going to have. And then I also walk them through, okay, here's the formula of how to figure out how many of the each color container you're going to be eating each day. Here's the foods that are, you know, that are acceptable for each of the colors. 
Make sure you go through all the, sh the cupboards in your house and throw out everything that's not on those lists. When I do those Zoom calls and I take the time to make sure that they are set up for that day one, that when day one of the challenge starts, they're not looking around, how do I get on Beachbody On Demand? What workout am I doing? What are these containers all about? What's this challenge group? When I take the time to make sure they have all that, like wrap, they, got, they got their head wrapped around all that and they're ready to hit the ground running, they have such a, a better experience and they're so much more likely to wanna to pay that forward by either referring friends to it because they love it or they want to become a coach. And when they do become a coach, they always make the best coaches because they start to, they just realize, okay, this is what coaches do. We don't just sell stuff. Our job starts when the, when they buy something instead of most coaches, they think their job ends once they get their two successful points. I don't really care as much about the successful points or the, the little bit of commission, the 50 bucks or whatever it is. Yeah, that's nice. But my job starts once they buy the challenge pack. That's when we really roll up our sleeves and go to work and make sure they have an amazing experience. That's what's when, when they become a coach, I've had coaches that are guest speakers on, on the, on the team call like this, that are one of my coaches signed up a coach who signed up a coach and they're doing really well. <clears throat> and I'll talk to them and they're like, yeah, like every challenger I get, I set up a zoom call with them. I, you know, I talk, talk, talk them through everything. And I go, how come you do that? You know, and they go, what do you mean? I go, how come you take that time to do a zoom call and really connect and get them set up for success like that? And they always say something like, that's, isn't that what every coach does? Like, that's just what my coach did for me. So why would not, I just thought that's what everyone does. And I'm like, good. You know, that's, don't think anything different. Because, the, but the truth of the matter is most coaches don't do that. Most coaches are focused on the sale and then they're moving on to the next. But when you start this ripple effect and this culture of really taking that time to connect and get them out of their comfort zone and help them set goals and make sure they're having a great experience interacting with people, then that ripple effect goes on when they become a coach. They do that same thing and, you don't, and they don't even think anything different. They're just like, that's just how... I was brought in. That's how my coach treated me. That's what I'm going to do with my challengers. And, and that's what creates this a culture of giving people an amazing experience. That's what creates not a revolving door business, but a, a family, a community of people that just kind of love the energy and the experience they're having and giving to others. So that that's kind of the bigger picture. The, I kind of find that to be the, the, foundation of, of a very successful business is really falling in love with the experience you're giving your people. And if you, if you do that, it's kind of inevitable that you're going to find like two or three coaches that, that fall in love with that same thing that fall in love with giving people an amazing experience. And they're going to start to have, give these people such great experiences that some of their people are going to want to become coaches and, and pass that experience on. And so the big picture is not to sell a million things and get a million successful points. The big picture is to give people an amazing experience to find those two or three rock star coaches, you know, and, and sometimes those rock star coaches aren't even, um, you know, your personally sponsored. They, you just, you need one or two great coaches on each leg and they don't have to be personally sponsored. But the way you're, that's going to happen is starting by really falling in love with the experience you give people. So that's the, the, the big picture mindset. And then, you know, how do you, how do you even get somebody into your challenge group? Which is what a lot of people, you know, that's the initial struggle is, okay, I want to give people an amazing experience, but how do I even get people into a challenge group? And that comes from being on the escalator, what we call the escalator mindset. So I'm sure you guys, have heard me talk about it or other people talk about it that, you know, this business sometimes feels like you're running up the down escalator, which I'm sure some of you have tried or your kids have tried, but that's the way you get people into your challenge group is by planting a seed, learning to fall in love with your nose. Cause most people are terrified to hear the word. No, I love nose. The more, the more nose I get in a day, the more successful I feel I was that day. Because now those people, they are going to watch me a lot closer. They're not ready yet, 
you know, or they don't even respond. But because I sent that invite out, uh, they're much more likely to just be like, kind of what's going on? What is he talking about? What's this challenge thing he's, he's thinking about doing? So the more no's I get, the, the more successful a day I had. And if you can teach your coaches to fall in love with their no's, there's a great book called Go For No. There's even a, a, a version of that book, Go For No, for network marketers. I think it's called Go For No for network marketers. But just the original Go For No book is, is awesome as well. So you, you learn to love your nose because you understand that we're farmers. Um, you know, just, just like Andrea, <laughs> um, we learn to fall in love with that process. And then in the meantime, while we're, while we're doing the things we need to do every day to show up for our own journey and, and people are watching that, we're also benefiting personally which is one of the things I love most about being a beach body coach is that the number one priority is taking care of your own health. I don't know how many jobs are set up that your number one priority and your is based on your own, your own health, your own wellness, your own mindset. So I, I'm always trying to do things that are going to be twofold and I'm trying to keep things as simple as I possibly can. And so for me, I'm, I want to do things that are going to benefit me personally and build my business at the same time. So like my morning routine is an example of that. You know, I, I wake up in the morning, I'll do my personal development, either listen or read, and then I'll share something on my stories. So that's super quick. It's benefiting me personally, my mind, and it's benefiting others because they're getting to see a little clip of my gratitude journal or a book I'm reading or, or listening to. And then, I'm using my Energize in the morning because I work out so much stronger and, and longer when I'm using my Energize. So I'll just share a quick little clip of me grabbing my Energize or stirring it up. That benefits me. And then it also benefits the people watching because they can see what is the stuff he's taking each morning that's helping him crush his workouts. And then I do my workout, which makes me feel like a much better version of myself. And then I'm just sharing a little five, 10 second clip, one move a move of the day. That is how I like to simplify the business. So I'm doing things that are benefiting me that I want to be doing anyway, but also then quickly I can share those things on my story so that other people get to see that consistently over an extended period of time. And all those people that said, no, they're seeing the little personal development I'm doing. They're seeing that the yellow stuff I'm taking, you know, they're seeing the little clips of the workouts I'm doing. So those are just, quick, simple things. And eventually those were, uh, those people start coming around. I have a, um, I'll show you a little thing I use to kind of track that's made a, a big difference. I can pull it up here. So you guys can find like what works best for you. But for me, just having a little Google sheet, something super simple that just has the name of the person, where I connected with them, whether it was Facebook or Instagram, what they were interested in, whether they you know, wanted a challenge pack or they said, maybe not right now, and I'll write future challenge pack or future challenge group because they weren't quite interested. And then a little note down, they're down for it, but has to travel to Guatemala and then perhaps in the future. So now I, I don't lose track of Mackenzie. I have a note here that said, okay, she's gonna be in Guatemala, but she said she, she might be interested in the future. And then, you know, you, can, you don't have to add these little checks for like where I connect with a, a connection or where the customer lead. Um, but just having the name, where you connected with them, what they were interested in, and then a little note. This is such a simple, easy way to not lose track of the people that you got the note from. So this is my no, this is what my, this is kind of what I refer to as my no sheet. These are the people that said no. And like I said, I love no's. The more no's I get, the more names I can add to this sheet. So the, the more no's I get, the, the more successful I'm going to be. And that's just the mindset that we have to kind of teach our coaches to have too, that they learn to fall in love with, with those no's. And that's what's going to lead to eventually getting those people into your challenge group 
and then, and then being able to give those people a really amazing experience. And then from that amazing experience, that's where you're going to probably find your one or two great leaders. I, I know a lot of coaches love to lead with the business. That isn't typically how I do it. I typically am leading with the challenge group and making sure they fall in love with the products and the, and the experience and even try to get them to, to get on board with some personal development, even before they become a coach, even as a customer in my challenge groups, you know, I'll recommend the book, the miracle morning or certain things like that for, for my challengers to fall in love with the four legs of the table. You know, I, I find that when you have, when your experience involves four legs of the table, you're going to have a very sturdy experience for your challengers. If you're missing one of the four legs, the, the experience your challenges are going to have is, isn't quite as sturdy. And so those four, those four legs of the table are fitness, nutrition, mindset, and community. If, if I'm giving those four things to is part of the experience that my challengers are having, they're going to have a much better experience, more likely to refer friends, more likely to stick with it, more likely to get better results, more likely to become a coach, and they'll be a better coach. Fitness, nutrition, mindset, support. And guess what? Those four things, because I'm giving those to other people and doing them myself, they're helping me <laughs> with my own journey at the same time. So it's a win-win. So this is, this is the list um, that I just kind of, kind of work from the no list. So um, just having little things like that, I think makes a big difference. And, you know, I think the things you do, the things you do right now are going to show up three months from now, the effort you're putting in the effort you put in what's today, July. So June, May, eight, the effort you put in the first three months of 2022, January, February, March, the amount of effort you put into those three months, that's probably what's showing up in your business right now. So the effort you put in right now, July, August, that's going to show up in your business in, in October, September, October, November. So if you're not put, if you don't put the effort in now, then you're probably not going to see the results in, in this, this fall. Um, you know, when kids are going back to school and things. So that's, I think the other part of the mindset is understanding that this is like kind of being like on an escalator and you have to understand that the work you put in now, the no's you collect right now are going to make you successful three months from now. It's very different than a normal job. You know, most people are so used to showing up, putting in the work, getting paid exactly for the work they did this week. They get paid that week for that work. Whereas in this business, you don't get paid for the work you put in this week until three months goes by. And that's, I think the biggest difference between when I was really struggling with the business and when I all of a sudden started to have a lot more success was because I understood that. I understood that the work I put in now isn't going to show up for three months. And I just have to, I just have to sign up for that. I just have to know that's how it works. And if I don't put in the effort now, it's not going to, I'm not going to have the results three months from now. So, these are kind of the, the big picture mindset the, these little things. And I think one, I remember hearing one time and I loved it was what, what is a, what is a leader? Because I think a lot of people get scared of the word leader. And for me, a, a leader isn't a very scary thing because as a leader, one, we're just living the lifestyle ourselves. We're, we're, we're being proof the products work or being proof of those four legs of the table that they, those actually work, fitness, nutrition, mindset, community. The other part of being a leader, which I really, really enjoy is teaching people how to think a little bit differently. A leader is someone who lives, lives it, you know, walks the talk is proof the products work, but also is, is really enjoys helping people think a little bit differently. And the best way you can teach people to think a little bit different differently is with stories for like, I'm a visual learner. How many of you guys are visual learners? So to teach people to think a little differently, the way that throughout my entire life, the things that helped me think a little differently were always a story I heard 
or something I read that was a story, you know, like the escalator mindset. It's just a quick little story that gets people to think a little bit differently about how this business works. You know, most people are taught to think that when you put an hour of time in, you get a certain amount of dollars back. That's how most people think, right? So as leaders, we got to teach people to, to understand that that's not how this business works. You invest your time up front and then it pays you dividends three or six months down the line. So we have to kind of teach people to think differently by using the stories, whatever works for you, whether that's the escalator mindset story or you guys know those, those water pumps, the old wells that you had to pump and it would just build up pressure, but you'd be sitting there pumping and pumping and pumping and pumping and you can't see it. That's the thing. You can't see the, the success coming in this business. You can't see the water rising up the well when you're pumping. So you might get, your arm gets tired. You're like, I can't see any water. This is like, doesn't seem like it's paying off just like in the business sometimes. But what you don't see is that the pressure is building up underneath the ground. And eventually, if you just continue to keep pumping and stay consistent, eventually that well, the water come, the pressure builds up and that water starts coming out the well. And then you don't even have to pump the thing anymore. It's just coming out on its own. And that's how this business works. But most people, that's not how they think. You know, they want instant gratification. So they're not willing to sit there and pump the well for a while. They're not willing to, you know, plant the seeds and get the nose and stay consistent with their own journey and stay on the escalator. So using stories like that is a great way to teach people to start to change the way they think. Another example of being a leader and teaching people to think a little differently is inviting. Most people are terrified of inviting. They're terrified of hearing the word no, right? That's how they think. They think no is failure no is failure. We need to teach them to think that no's are actually how you become successful. The more no's you get, the more names you add to the list, the more success you're going to have. So the way I like to reframe inviting is by, by telling them a story of, okay, think of inviting like you're inviting people to a party at your house and you're going to throw a party once a month. Let's say you're throwing a party this Friday. You're not going to be worried if you invite someone to a party at your place and they don't show up or they don't say no. It's not the end of the world if they can't make it. The, the, the thing that, do, that would be tough is if they never got the invitation. That's what I'm, I'm more worried about, forgetting to send out the invitation to somebody. I'm not worried about them not you know, saying they wanna come or not responding. I just wanna make sure the invitation's out there. And if they say no, then that's fine. But at least they know they got the invitation and then I'll let them know that I'm always gonna be throwing these parties once, once a month. Once a month, I'm gonna send out that invite to them. And, and if, if they can't make it, I'm always like, totally cool, no worries. Uh, you know, and then I add them to my little spreadsheet and uh, make sure I connect with them the next month and make sure they know, hey, I'm throwing another party. <laughs> and I, I like to also teach my coaches that it's a, it's a party we're inviting to, that takes, I think that makes people think a little differently about inviting and not feel like, oh my God, I'm so salesy and annoying. They go, no, okay, I'm just inviting to the party. If they can make it, great. If they can't, great, no big deal. So that's kind of the, the big picture mindset. Um, and then eventually that kind of inevitably leads to finding and developing you know, a couple of really great coaches that want to live that same lifestyle and want to give that same experience to their people and want to create that same type of financial independence in their life too. It's just kind of, <laughs> if you, if you never quit, it's inevitable. You're going to find a couple of good, great people like that. The only way you really mess the business up is if you stop pumping the well, if you stop pumping it and stop and stop learning uh, uh, how to get better at those five skills. So, once, once the coach kind of understands, okay, there's only two things you ever got to learn. The big picture mindset that, you know, learning to love the nose, being on the escalator. And the second thing is the what, the, excuse me, the five skills. So one of the very first things I ask people when I'm talking about that big picture mindset, you know, the escalator, that learning to love the nose is what's your why? Why are you doing this? 
why are you going to, what's going to get them to have the, enough fuel and fire to collect no's? Hopefully, you know, I, I think, unfortunately, most people aren't even willing to, to think about that because they don't even want to say anything too big because then if they don't reach it, then they feel like a failure or something. So they they're better. They'd rather just live in the little comfort zone, which is fine. But I know there's a lot of people that aren't fine with that and, and are kind of dying to be able to step out of that comfort zone. So I'm always asking my coaches, what's your, why, what's your vision? Why are you doing this? Obviously you have to have a love for helping people. But there also has to be something that's personal to you and, and your future and your family's future, whether it's more time, more financial freedom, location freedom, whatever, whatever that is for, for you guys and for your coaches, helping them understand that they got to find something that is personal to them beyond, they obviously they want to, they got to have that love for helping others and, and having an impact in the world but also what are they doing that's personal to them for their, for their future that they can't currently have right now? What kind of stress do they have in their life that an extra hundred bucks a week would help with an extra 500 bucks a week would help with. That's going to be their fuel on the days. They don't feel like helping people and talking to people and collecting those. They got to have that personal why that's going to fuel them to make time on the days they don't have time or to, to just do it on the days they don't feel like it because everybody can do the, the simple skills on the, on the days they feel like it. But what separates the successful coaches is they do it on the days they don't feel like it. That's the game changer. And that comes from something that's personal. So that's that part of that big picture mindset, having that fuel, that why, and that, that understanding of how the escalator works, you know, planting the seeds, and then, then once they have that, that's 80% of the battle, that having a strong why and that belief and that understanding of, okay, the escalator, I see how it works. I need two or three great coaches. That's 80% of the battle. Then I can start to work with them on developing the five skills. And, you know, those five skills I think are not, a, not super complicated. They're not, it's not rocket science, but, you know, you can always get better at them. And the first one is just sharing your journey on social media. So sharing your journey on social media through your stories and through posts, that is what is going to allow people to see the consistency. And also you can see who's watching your stories. You can see who's liking your posts. And those are the people that you can reach out to. And I'll even, I'll share in the chat here a little message that you guys can, copy if you want. Let's see. So I'll share this and then you guys can, if you're on your computers, um, you might just want to copy and paste it into an email, email it to yourself so that you can just open it on your phone. And I like, I just have this saved in my notes on my phone. I also shared it in the, I also shared it in the team boom coach group, but it just something like, Hey, thanks for the love on my recent post or Hey, thanks for, you know, following my stories. Not sure if this would be something that's up your alley, but you seem like an active person. So I just thought I'd ask, I started up a three week online challenge group this week with some friends to crush some nutrition and accountability. Would that be something you'd be interested in? or want more info about, no worries if not. Boom, seed planted, seed planted there. And so, the, but I couldn't do that if I wasn't sharing on my stories and you know posting a few times a week at least because the sharing on the stories and posting a few times a week, that's what allows me to see who's watching, who's liking, then I can extend that invitation, which you know, I, I like that it ends with no worries if not, you know, just like it's a, Hey, throw on a party Friday. If you can make it, no worries. If not, boom, so simple. Who, you know, who cares what they respond back with? At least you let them know that the invitation's out there. Right. 
and then kind of go from there. So that's the first skill of just sharing in your journey on social media, you know, sharing those four things, those four parts of your journey, those four legs, but also what else do you do that you, you enjoy, you know, like, cause the second skill is connecting with people that you have things in common with. Cause you could be so great at the first skill of, you know, making great posts every day, sharing on your journey, sharing on your stories. But if you have the same two people liking your posts and watching your stories every day, it's going to be tough to build a business. So the second skill is connecting with new people, getting more eyes on your journey. So one of the ways you can do that is Facebook groups, you know, Facebook groups, uh, people that you're going to have things in common with, you know, if you're a mom that lives in Syracuse, New York, there's tons of mom groups. If you're someone who's a huge Kentucky basketball fan or a huge Wisconsin basketball fan, you know, there's going to be Facebook groups for people that have that same thing in common with you. So whatever you whatever the big things are that you're in, maybe you love certain books, Harry Potter, or whatever it is like romance novels, you know, whatever your thing is that you really enjoy there's probably two or three really cool things, or maybe you played volleyball in high school or whatever it is. You can find a group of people that live near you and are into those, those same interests. And then you can comment in the group, friend request people, message people. That's that second skill of connecting with new, with new people. You know, when I, when I first started Beachbody, the way I did skill two of how did I find and connect with new people I had things in common with, I would just go to the P90X fan page or the Insanity fan page or Tough Mudder fan page. And I would connect with people that were into the workouts, the fitness. I would go in when I was living in South Florida, I joined the, the South Florida volleyball Facebook group. That's how I connected with some people that ended up becoming some of my customers and coaches. So finding those people that you live near I think is a bonus. They don't have to live near you, obviously, but if they live near you and you have certain things in common with them, like let's say you're, you know, whatever you're, you, you love playing a certain sport, you could find a group of people that play that same sport in your same area or certain TV shows that you love or certain authors that you like reading. Or if you're a mom, that's, an, that's a super easy one because there's tons of mom groups for every town and every city. Um, so that second skill is, okay, let's get more eyes on your journey, connecting with people. And then also part of, of that second skill, besides just adding new people that you're connecting with, I love to see whose birthdays it is on, on Facebook. You can, on your computer, I'll just search in the Facebook search, I'll search birthday. And it said, he'll show me all my friends who have a birthday today or in the last like three days. And I'll just message all those people and say, Hey, happy birthday you know, doing anything fun for it. And, um, I'll, I'll say like, how, you know, how, how are things going in Boston? Um, are you still working for X, Y, Z company? So it's a happy birthday. And then also just, Hey, like, how are things where you're at and, and what you're, you know, what you're doing? I, I can't tell you how many people I've reconnected with that I totally forgot about. And I had, they never had liked or seen anything I'd ever post, but because I sent them a happy birthday and just asked them, Hey, how's Boston? How's that, that old, that job kind of thing. All of a sudden I started to see those people showing up watching my stories. Um, so that second skill is connecting with new people, getting more eyes on your journey. Obviously that's, that's huge, but also reconnecting with your current connections by using the birthdays, happy birthday. You know, how are things going? Um, so skill one, sharing your journey on social media. Skill two, getting eyes on your journey, connecting with those people, finding people that you have things in common with, checking in, see how people are doing. Skill three, we talked a lot about already. That's the invitation to the party. That thing I, po I, shared, in the, I shared right there in the chat. Um, would, would that be something you'd be interested in or want more info about? No worries if not. Basically, hey, I'm throwing a party. If you can make it great, if not, no worries. That's skill three. And part of skill three is, is, is being organized with something super simple, whether you like pen or paper or you like the Google sheet for like that I use, that's how you're gonna keep track of the seeds you've planted and the people that 
kind of showed a little bit of interest so that you remember to invite them to the party next month and making those little notes. Um, Cause the fortunes and the follow up, I'm sure you guys have heard that, but most of the time people aren't going to say yes the first time, you know, that's what we got to remember how we have to teach people how to think differently. So learning to love the nose, adding the names to the spreadsheet, that's all part of that third skill. And then the fourth skill we talked a lot about giving those people an amazing experience. And then the fifth skill is then those people that are having an amazing experience. All you have to say to those people is, Hey, I love having you in this group. You're crushing it. Have you ever considered doing what I do? I think you'd be great at it. Have you ever considered doing what I do? I think you'd be great at it. And all you have to do as, as a coach that's trying to help new coaches get started, you don't have to overthink the whole thing. You want to, one, find out what their why is. Help them think a little bit outside of the box for that. Teach them that big picture mindset of, okay, you'd only, you just need to find two or three great coaches to do this with you. And then teach them those five skills. Because a lot of times coaches, they're like, I don't think I could be a – I don't think I can be a leader. Like, I don't even know what I'm doing. How am I supposed to teach a new coach? All you have to do is, is really just help them get, get good at those five skills. And you're not alone. You don't have to teach them those five skills on your own. You know, we have a coach basics once a month that really goes over the big picture mindset. And then the, in the first week, it's all about the escalator mindset, that big picture and that love in the nose. That's all week one. And then the second week is the five skills. So whenever you feel a little bit, oh man, I don't think I could ever do this. I don't think I'd be good enough to like help other coaches. I don't even know what I'm doing. I love to always just bring it back to the sim simplest aspect of the business, which is the five skills. And just here's a, again, teaching people to think differently. Hopefully this helps you guys think differently about the five skills. This is a new, this is a new story I kind of just recently started using that I, that I really like. So I like to think of the, your why and that kind of that, that why and those five skills, each of those things, your why, and then each of those five skills, think of, think of your business as a hose. And each of those five skills is a kink in the hose. If you're not good at one of those five skills, it's going to throw off the flow of your business. It's going to throw off the flow of your hose. If you want your business to flow and have customers and coaches coming in, you have to unkink each of those skills. And if your coaches are struggling, this is, I love, I love problem solving and pinpointing why a coach is struggling. The worst thing is when a coach is struggling and they don't know why, but if you use this analogy of, Hey, this business is these five skills and each one of those skills is a kink in the hose. We just need to unkink each of those five skills. Once you are good at each of those five, then you have this business that's flowing and customers or coaches are coming in. If you're not having coaches and customers come in or your coaches, some of your coaches aren't, then there's a kink in one of those five skills or they just don't have a why. <laughs> so first is what's, what's your why and really creating that, that will unkink that first thing. And then the five skills, you slowly unkink each of those. So I like to, what I like to do with my coaches is ask them on a scale of one to 10, how confident do you feel with skill number one? So you got in the chat, you guys in the chat can write this on a scale of one to 10, how confident do you currently feel or how, how well do you think you've done in the last three months of sharing your journey on social media? You can be honest in the chat on a scale of one to 10, what would you give yourself on skill one, sharing, sharing on your journey on social media? Obviously that means you have to be on a journey. So if you've been kind of slacking on your own nutrition, your own mindset, your own workouts, then probably that skill one's probably been slacking too. So Annie said she's been a seven out of 10 on her stories, a two out of 10 on, on her actual posts so that you know, that's a great way to break that down because some people crush their stories, but they're not making the posts or vice versa. So, and Kat gave herself an eight on the sharing the, her journey through social media. And, you know, 
I kind of like to make sure I'm sharing, um, you know, those three things, the fitness, nutrition, and mindset. And I do that with, you know, just sharing a clip of my workout, a picture of the book I'm reading or of the gratitude journal, the energize. Um, but then I'm also sharing things I'm interested in too, that other people I'm going to find I have in common with, whether that's, you know, playing a sport or travel or, you know, whatever, whatever it is that you guys have as, as your hobbies. Um, so sharing that journey on social media on a scale of one to 10, you can do this with yourself and with your coaches. This is how you're going to learn to unkink. This is how, this is how you become a really good leader because you help your coaches identify where they have a kink in their business. Skill two on a scale of one to 10, give yourself in the past three months, how you feel like you've been doing with connecting with new people, getting new eyes on your journey, or just connecting with, you know, your old friends saying happy birthday, asking them, Hey, how are things where you live? How's the, how's the job going on a scale of one to 10, put in the chat, how you guys think you're doing with in the past three months with that part. And then you can do this with your coaches too, with those, these five skills, just so you can start to help them identify where they, where they have kinks. Again, really un helping them first identify why their business isn't working. Because most people get, can get upset and frustrated when it's not working and they don't know why. They're like, I don't know what's happening. I don't know why this isn't working. This helps them identify and helps you know where they need help, where they have kinks. So go ahead in the chat, throw a one to 10 on how you feel like you've done in the last three, three months with connecting with old friends and reconnecting, getting new eyes, connecting with people. And then on a scale of one to 10, uh, I appreciate the honesty, Kat. Um, so this is a good exercise to do at least once, once a month with yourself and with your coaches. Just going through these five skills and having everybody assess themselves on a scale of one to 10 once a month at the end of the month or something. How, how did you do in June? Um, then they don't think they're not, then they're not confused and wondering why isn't this working? They know exactly why. And then they know where they need to put their effort to improve that skill, which anybody can improve these five skills. Okay. Andrea six with connecting with old friends, a one for connecting with new people. Okay, cool. So then the third skill on a scale of one to 10, inviting and follow-ups. On, on the last month or two, how do you think you've been doing with inviting? With you know, that little example that I shared there, how, how, how do you think you've been doing with sending out the invites like that to the people that are watching and liking your posts? And then um, also give yourself a score for the follow-up process of, okay, I'm, lear I'm learning to love my nose. The more nose I have, the more successful I'm gonna be. I have my little, my way of tracking, whether it's pen and paper or whatever works for you. Um, give yourself a one to 10 and have your coaches do this too. One to 10 of uh, inviting to the party and then tracking and following up with those people. Give, give yourself a one to 10 for that part as well. And then the last two skills, and then we're done in 60 seconds. Give yourself a one to 10 on giving people an amazing experience. And then give yourself a one to 10 on, on just those people that are having an, an a great experience saying to them, have you ever considered doing what I do? I think you'd be great at it. Have you ever considered doing what I do? I think you'd be great at it. Cool. All right. We got, we got like two, two minutes left for uh, questions. If anybody has any. You can either unmute yourself or put it in the chat. But was this, raise your hand if this is something that you think would be helpful for you as, as you evolve into a leader and want to be able to help your coaches more. Is this something that you think using this kind of this unkinking process is going to be able to help you identify where your coaches are struggling a little bit? Helpful? Yeah, no? Good, good. Cool. All right. I have a question, Patrick. Yeah. Um, on your uh, spreadsheet, the column, I think it was the third column in, was that for like how you, like where you, what kind of a post you had posted that helped you connect with that person? It said oh. like, um, like challenge group or 
upcoming challenge group or free group or something like that? Yeah, I'll usually it's either business or challenge group. And honestly, if I, um, so I'll either put, they were interested in, the, in a challenge group or they're interested in the business. And okay. as you can see, I mean, they're all interested in a challenge group mm -hmm. or a total solution pack, which is the exact same thing. But, you know, this is because I don't really talk to people about the business much until I can give them an experience as a customer first. So yeah, basically this is just kind of a little, okay, these, this person was interested in a challenge group. This person, maybe sometimes if they're interested in like this month's challenge group, they're like, Hey, yeah, maybe I'm interested. And I'll say, okay, cool. Like, let me tell you about what you get in the challenge pack. I just throw CG right here because there's someone that's interested in it in the current challenge group. If they say not right now, I'm traveling, I'll be in Guatemala. I'll put future challenge group. So this, Kind of this helps me be like, all right, the people with the CG, they I need to make sure I'm following up with them like tomorrow because they're, they're they want to get in the one that's starting like next week. The CG, I'm like, okay, they, they might be interested in a month from now. Okay, cool, thank you. Yeah, um, and then everything I went over with you guys, the mindset you know, I have videos for kind of each of these. Um, basically this is, uh, even the 45 second presentation, there's a, the, the book, one of my favorite books of all time, there's a PDF that I have a link for that book. Um, and it has pictures and everything. That's such a great thing for coaches. I mean, talk about teaching people to think differently with visual pictures. This 45 second presentation PDF is a game changer for that. And then I have a few videos I made about the big picture escalator mindset, a video about how to help people become gold ships, which they talk about in the 45 second presentation, a video about helping people create a stronger why and a belief, a video about how to help people discipline their disappointment. This is basically week one of coach basics right here. And then week two of coach basics is the five skills. So there's a little video I made about how to share on social media, um, there's a, a link that has like an example of how to draft your first post. Um, there's a video for connecting with your, with new people. Um, there's a video for how to invite and there's a link to the five step invite process that I use for a little Google sheet or a Google doc. Um, there's a video that explains how to give people an amazing experience and the templates I use in the challenge group. And then I even have like my script of how I invite people to take a look at coaching in the, I call it the three, two call script for if someone's, in, you know, if I've said, Hey, like, have you ever considered doing what I do? I think you'd be great at it. Um, this is what I, this is what I use to kind of talk to them. So I'll put this in the chat for this whole, this PDF or this Google sheet. But yeah, once someone says, yeah, that, I, I am interested, uh, well, I'm kind of curious, what is it all about? I'll put that person on a group message with like two or three other coaches that they might have things in common with. And I'll just say, hey, hey guys, I put Bob on this group message. Um, he's been crushing it in the challenge group. Have, can, would you guys mind just sharing like what you love about coaching and what made you become a coach and then that that way Bob gets a few other perspectives of like kind of what coaching is all about and why people love it. And, um, and then um, once they get that idea, then I might hop on like a zoom with them and just share with them. Hey, these are the things we offer as a coach, the four legs of the table, fitness, nutrition, um, support mindset. And then I teach them the two ways you earn as a coach, which is, your personal customers. And then the second way is the team volume from how many people that, that your team's helping. And then I think people, if they've been through a challenge group, had a great experience and they've been on that group message with like two or three other coaches. And then I do a little zoom with them and kind of walk through the two ways you earn as a coach. They're going to have a pretty good idea whether or not the coaching thing's going to be good for them. If it is great, if it isn't great, you know, either way is I just want to make sure they, they kind of know what it, what it is and how it works. And then it's kind of up to them. Does that make sense? Cool. All right, guys. 
July 5th, time to crank it. We only got, and then obviously you guys know next week's summit. And uh, so Thursday the 14th, which is in 11 days from now, um, Carl, Carl goes on stage Thursday night and, uh, Thursday night's always usually my favorite because that's when he shares all the new stuff that's going to be coming out the rest of this year and next in the beginning of next year too. So, but in the meantime, I'll be, I'll be using, I've been using this invite quite a bit. The one I shared in here. Um, so I'm just going to keep plugging along with that and, and I'm going to, I'm working on skill two today. I'm going to go into some Facebook groups and connect with some people that live in Austin and that, you know, play volleyball or um, pickleball, things like that. So right now I'm focusing on skill two a lot this week, probably next week. I'm going to really focus on skill three. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be doing the birthdays connected with the people in the Facebook groups this week. And then next week I'll start to kind of be like, Hey, I got this group coming up. If you're interested, no worries. If not, so I like to kind of batch it like that. So I know you said that you don't really talk about the coaching before giving them like the challenge group experience, but do you ever like use Summit as something to talk about in terms of the coaching experience? Yeah, definitely. You know, I, I always have people that decide they want to become coaches, you know, want, when they see all the stuff that I'm posting from Summit. Um, so yeah, like while I'm at summit and kind of leading up to summit, I'm talking about what summit is. Cause you could, I mean, if you just say, Hey, I'm going to summit, nobody knows what that is, but I try to start talking about, yeah, I'm going to summit, meeting up with a bunch of the other beach body coaches. And we're going to learn about building our business skills and get to work out with the trainers. And it's just, a, you know, kind of a great energy and environment. And so I start to share a little bit about that. Um, and then I, you know, then I obviously share a lot of stuff like while I'm there and a lot of people, uh, end up like really being kind of, Oh, wow, this, this sounds really cool. I want to, I want to really take a little, little closer look at this. All right, cool. Yeah. Thank you. Got it. All right, guys. Good stuff. I'll talk to you guys soon. Sounds good. Bye Patrick. See you guys.